Before I jump into this video, I just want to let you know that we actually had a spot open up in our travel photography workshop to Peru this coming May. So if you're interested in that, be sure to click on me right now for the information. It's going to be a lot of fun, so check it out. What's up, I'm travel photographer Brendan Vanson of brendansadventures.com and I'm here at Merritt Island Wildlife Refuge just outside of Orlando and I'm going to do a little bit of a test with a two-time extender on some bird photography. So I have this two-time extender from Canon, this is version 2, that I've had forever. I've had it for two, three years and I don't really use it because as you know I used to shoot a 60D and when I was shooting this two-time extender in Africa trying to do some wildlife, I just was not getting sharp images. I wasn't getting good image quality at all. So we're here in Merritt Island and we, there's lots of birds, there's egrets, there's herons, there's lots of cool stuff to shoot. So I thought I'd test it out now that I've got a full frame sensor and see if it makes any difference. So the biggest problem with the two time extender is it really slows down your shutter speed. This is a 70 to 200 millimeter uh, f2.8. When you throw on a two time extender, it drops that down to f5.6. So you lose a couple stops of light and it slows down your shutter speed considerably. On top of that, I'm now at 400 millimeters. That means if I'm trying to get a sharp shutter, I'm gonna need at least one over 800 as a shutter speed, one 800th of a second as a shutter speed, or I'm probably gonna get uh, less sharp images. And since I've lost those two stops of light, I need to do something about that. So the way you can do that is bumping ISO. So I just had a great egret right in front of me in the perfect scene, the perfect location, the perfect light, everything was perfect. And I noticed something about the two time extender that I noticed when shooting on my 60D and that's the autofocus is quite slow. And not only is it slow, but it fails a lot. I had like the perfect light, the perfect amount of contrast, everything should have been right. And it looks like only one out of my five or six images is even remotely sharp. It's an issue I had last time on the 60D that I was hoping I would be able to uh, fix by shooting higher ISOs and higher shutter speeds on a full frame camera, but I'm not exactly convinced that that's the case so far. Uh, we need to do some more shooting to figure it out though, so let's get at it. One of the worries I had in moving to full frame is that I was going to lose some of that distance you get with a crop sensor like a 60D or a 7D Mark II. It was a little bit of an issue and a little bit of a worry and I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal but I've already noticed shooting any sort of wildlife that 200 millimeters on a full frame camera just isn't enough. So a two time extender like this is a nice stop gap if you can't afford a 400 millimeter f5.6 or an f300 or at 300 millimeter f2.8 or f4 or something like that. It's way cheaper, it's about 300 to 400 dollars, but you do lose some image quality, even just looking on the back of my screen here. I'm seeing the images aren't as sharp as I would hope, but the real way to see how sharp the images are is to take them home to the digital darkroom and check them out there. So let's go back home and look at them in the back of the computer to see if we got some sharp images with the 6D and the two time extender. So what's up mother photographers? I am back in the digital darkroom. It's actually been about a week since I took those photos out at Merritt Island Wildlife Refuge. This road trip has been just so jam packed, so busy that I haven't had time to get behind my computer at all and do any sort of photo editing or look at images or do any video filming or anything. We've been on the road a lot. So as you can probably tell by my beard and the disheveled nature of perhaps the room around me, if you can see it, it's been busy and I've been just struggling to find time to do some work. But I'm here in the digital darkroom and I thought I would take you through those images um, from Merritt Island Wildlife Refuge that I shot using this uh, two time extender. This is the Canon two times extender version two. I shot that with the 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 uh, version one IS lens. Now I have the 60 millimeter, or I have the 60D on right now. The 6D that I was shooting all the images on is taking the video right now. But I'll show you how it works in case you didn't know how it how an extender works. Basically, you have this piece of glass here. You pop that off. And then you take your lens off or your camera off chicken before the egg, whichever one comes first. And then you just put the extender on your camera, like so. 
and then your lens goes on top of it both. So now it just fits in between the two of them. So that's going to magnify your lens two times. Um, but as you're going to see from the images that I'm about to show you, there are definitely compromises. The image quality uh, hurts, to be honest. Uh, I just took a look through the images. I was expecting better results than I got. And yeah, the image quality kind of isn't good at all. But anyway, I'll show you the images to, to show you what I'm talking about right now. So I'm going to buzz through these images really quickly and show you kind of a brief overview of what we shot out there. And you'll be able to tell they're not great bird images. The birds were a long ways away from us. Uh, they weren't really posing for us and there wasn't that many of them there at Merritt Island. But I did get some shots and had the two time extender been good or had I been shooting on like a a 400 millimeter prime lens or something like that, I probably would have got some shots there that I was really happy with. Um, but in the end, none of these are keepers for me. And that's just the truth. And I'm going to take you into a couple of the images and just show you the problems and uh, talk about some of the problems that arise when you shoot a two time extender. So one of these images over here, the bird's a long ways away. It's a tough exposure with a white bird. Um, but if you zoom in, this is the issue you see it all of, with all these bird photos. Um, and that's a terrible example because that one's not sharp. So let's go to a different one um, like this one here. Um, and this is what you see with all of them. So if you can tell, it just looks dirty. Everything looks not grainy, it's not noise, and it's not a sharpness issue because you can see it's sharp along the bill. It just looks dirty. It looks like there's a film of dirt over the image. There's no contrast. There's no sharpness, there's no clarity, there, it's just not good image quality. It looks like this photo was taken by a potato rather than, you know, $4,000 worth of equipment. It's just not good and it's not sharp. And things like this lack of contrast can be corrected in post-processing by adding more blacks and more contrast, but you're still not going to get good image quality. And look, there's chromatic aberration along the edges here. Um, and that's something I saw in basically all the images. In Even if the image is sharp, it's got all those issues. So this is another one. And if you see it from a distance, you see, wow, that looks okay. Everything looks fine. You zoom in on the subject and you see that same filmy, dirty, uh, grimy look to it. In the dark shadows you can see all these artifacts. Now that's not noise, that's just straight up artifacts. If you look on the head of the bird or the neck, it's got tons of chromatic aberration. The image quality just is not good. Um, this is another example. This is a great scene that I had. I really liked this look and I loved the whole scene. But when you zoom in on the image, it's just not bright. The sharpness is right there on the eye, but it just has this film of dirt. It just looks bad and I'm really unhappy with it. And the truth is that if I was a bit of a, if I was just a hobbyist, if I was just a tourist, if I was just some dude that was like wanting to take cool pictures to remind myself of things I did and things I saw, if I was going on an African safari and I wasn't trying to hang pictures on my wall from that trip, I was just trying to remember them by looking at them on my computer, then a two time extender might work because you'll get a little bit more distance and it looks decent if you see them on uh, just on a computer screen. It's from a professional standpoint, when you zoom right in on the subject and you see all that grimy nastiness that the image has using the two time extender, that's the problem. And I can't sell any of these images. They're all burners to me. Um, yeah, they're all burners. Another one of the issues you get with a two time extender like this is autofocus. The autofocus is incredibly slow when you add a two time extender. And when you're shooting birds in flight, for example, you need that speed to be there. You need to be quick on the toes and you need your autofocus to follow right along with it. And I missed, I'd say 80% of my bird in flight um, sequences. This is the only one I got. It looks cool, but again, you've got that filmy, grainy, sandy look on all the images. And the truth is with the 70 to 200 and the two time extender, I thought, you know, maybe it just can't handle noise. I shot images at ISO 100 on a tripod, mirror locked up, 
uh, zoomed in on live view to make sure the focus was there, you still get that nasty look when you zoom into uh, the photos. So to give you a bit of a comparison to see what it should look like rather than what it looked like with the two time extender, I'm going to show you a couple images from the Everglades. Now, the Everglades images are still confidential, so we can't talk about them because I haven't done the video and article for them yet. It just works with this. So I'm going to buzz you into a couple of these images and show you what it should like look like. But this is going to be in a bigger video on the Everglades and the Florida Keys later on. So. Um, let me just zoom into a couple of these images and show you. This is uh, a cormorant shot at 200 millimeters at 5.6 and it's not loading, but you can see the sharpness right around the eye and there's no filmy nastiness. Um, let's go find another bird here. This is an interesting one because this is a egret and I shot this f2.8 from close range or f3.2 and Getting sharpness at this range would be tricky, or is tricky. You can see this sharpness right here. You can see the clarity in the image and the color contrast. It's beautiful when you do it right and you don't use an extender. Let's grab another image quick just to show you that it's not a, a an accident. Uh, let's go for a gator. So if we open this gator up, zoom in on his eye, which is what I believe I focused on, you can see again it's sharp and there's none of that nastiness all the way around the teeth. You see how clear and crystal that is. That's how an image is supposed to look. So that's why I'm never gonna use the two-time extender again. That's why the two-time extender is dead to me. Um, it's gone. I mean, it's as good as trash. I feel, I feel, I feel abused to be honest by the two-time extender. I've been packing this thing around for almost three years on the hope and belief that it was gonna work once I had the 60, once I had the full frame, that the image quality be, would be good and I'd be able to get something out of it. And it let me down. So not only am I sad about the 250 some dollars I spent on it in the first place, I'm sad because I packed it around for two and a half, three years. An absolute waste of space in my bag. But that being said, as I mentioned before, if you're just a hobbyist or you're just a tourist and you're going on a trip to Africa and you don't want to pay for a 400 millimeter, 500 millimeter lens and you already have a 200 millimeter lens, then it might be a good option for you. But I still don't think it's that great and you might as well just go to like a lens rental company and rent a 400 millimeter lens for the week or two weeks instead because it's going to be the same price and you're going to get better quality. Again, that being said, if you want this two-time extender, I'm going to send it to you. If you want my two-time extender, I'll pack it in a bag, in bubble wrap even, and send it off to wherever you live. All you have to do is pay for the shipping, and maybe like, if you pay me $20 for a bottle of whiskey so I can forget that I spent 250 bucks on this, and carried it around for three years, give me 20 bucks in shipping and I'll send it to you. So post in the comments if you want this and I will arrange to send it to you because I want it out of my bag that badly. Anyways, people, that's it for the show. If you wanna see these images uh, like in depth and high resolution, you can head over to my website, brendansadventures.com right now by clicking somewhere around me at this very moment. And it's going to take you to the article I wrote about this as well as the 100% crops on the uh, images taken with the two-time extender as well as some of the images taken in the Everglades for comparison just so you can see the difference because it is extensive. Um, yeah, before I go, I also want to remind you about that open spot on my travel photography workshop in Peru with Tiffany Voost. We have one spot open. It's going to be awesome. The trip starts May 1st and yeah, the info is right around me at somewhere um, somewhere around me right now as well. So just click on that if you want more information. There's lots of really cool stuff still coming up on this US road trip. We're going to Disney World. We're going to Disney World. We're going to Universal State Studios. We're going to the Florida Keys, the Everglades, and then back across the country to hit up spots like Utah, Arizona, San Francisco, uh, Sequoia National Forest Park or whatever it's called. There's lots of cool stuff, so be sure to stay subscribed and stay tuned. I'll catch you later. Peace.